Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Uh, today, I'm going to be reacting to Is it better to follow Hinduism or Islam since both teach that God is one? So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Regarding Hinduism compared to that is Islam. In the Hinduism, it is also said that there is only one God, whereas the same is said in Quran also. Is it good to go with Islam or with Hinduism? Mashallah. It's a very good question. Brother says that he's a Hindu. He knows the Hindu scripture says there's one God. Even Islam says there's one God. Is it better to follow Islam or is it better to follow Hinduism? The reply is given in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, where Almighty God says, Tala vila kalimatin sawa im baina baina kum. Come to common terms as between us and you. So let us agree to follow what is common. The first is Allah nabda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Now, I'm giving you an answer that will satisfy both the Hindu and the Muslim. The first you have to do is better follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. So when you're following what is common in the Quran and the Hindu scriptures, neither the Hindu will feel offended, neither the Muslim will feel offended. The problem is neither do the Hindus know, neither do the Muslims know very well what is common in both the scriptures. First thing most important is Allah and Allah that you worship none but one God. That you already know. You already agree that there's one God. Alhamdulillah. Let's go to the other point. The other point that is common is that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. The Muslims agree, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. If you read the Hindu scriptures, there are hundreds of references I can give you. Only from the Hindu scriptures talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I can give a talk, time does not permit me to give a long talk of a couple of hours. But if you read the Hindu scriptures, it's mentioned in Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhe 3, Shlokas 5 to 8 about the coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhe 3, Shlokas 10 to 27 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 1, Adhe 3, Shlokas 21 to 23 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read Atharva Ved, it's mentioned in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it's called as Kuntap Suktas. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 6 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 7 of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's prophesied even in Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 53, verse number 9. There are many references of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scripture. He is called as Ahmad, means one who praises. That was the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is mentioned by name as Ahmad in Psalm Ved Uttarchik, mantra number 1500. He is mentioned as Ahmad in Psalm Ved Indra, chapter number 2, verse number 152. He is also mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter 31, verse number 8. In Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 6, verse number 10. He is mentioned in Atharva Ved, book number 8, hymn number 5. Verse number 16. In Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 126, verse number 14. He is mentioned by name as Narashansa. Narashansa in Sanskrit means Nar, means man. Shansa means one who's praiseworthy. So Narashansa means a man who's praiseworthy. If you translate into Arabic, it means Muhammad. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned by name as Narashansa. In many places in the Hindu scriptures, in Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 13, verse number 3. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 18, verse number 9. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 106, verse number 4. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 142, 
verse number three. He's mentioned Rig Veda, book number two. Hymn number three, verse number two. Rig Veda, book number five. Hymn number five, verse number two. And Rig Veda, book number seven. Hymn number two, verse number two. Rig Veda, book number ten. Hymn number sixty-four, verse number three. Rig Veda, book number ten. Hymn number one and two, verse number two. In Judges chapter number twenty-one, verse number fifty-five. Judges chapter twenty, verse thirty-seven. Judges chapter twenty, verse fifty-seven. Judges chapter twenty-eight, verse number two. Judges chapter twenty-eight, verse number nineteen. Judges chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-two. I can keep on and on. Quoting only references from the Hindu scripture about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if you are a good Hindu, you should believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'll just give you one reference more about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Kalki Purana. He is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number four, five, seven, eleven, and fifteen. It says that this Kalki Purana. Is the last and final Antim Rishi is the last and final messenger. His father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God. Yas means servant. It means servant of God. In Arabic, it's Abdullah. And you know the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father was Abdullah. It mentions his mother's name would be Sumati. Sumati in Sanskrit means peace, serenity. In Arabic, it's Amina, and that was the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he'll be born in the city of peace, referring to Makkah. He'll be born in the family of the priest of that city. We know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the family of Quraysh. He will be a universal Antim Rishi. He'll be universal, as the Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 107. Wa ma arsalna ka illa rahmatul alamin that we have sent thee not but as a mercy to the whole of humanity, to all the worlds. To all the creatures, it prophesizes that he will get the revelation in a mountain. We know he got the revelation in Jabal Nur in Gara Hira. It says he will migrate northwards and come back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah to Medina northwards and came back. It further says that he will have four companions. Talking about the first Khulfa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali. May Allah be pleased with them all. So all these prophecies mentioned in the scriptures. Point to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if you are a good Hindu, besides believing in one God, you also have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It's mentioned in both the scriptures that you should not have alcohol. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter five, verse number nine, not to have alcohol. It's mentioned in Manusmiti chapter number nine, verse number two thirty-five. You should not have alcohol. Manusmiti chapter number nine, verse number two thirty-eight. You should not have alcohol. Manusmiti chapter number eleven, verse number fifty-five. Manusmiti chapter number eleven, verse number ninety-four. You should not have alcohol. So, if you are a Hindu or a Muslim, you should not have alcohol. Both the scriptures say that you should not gamble. So, the Maida chapter five, verse number nineteen in the Quran says that. Manusmiti chapter number nine, verse number two twenty one to two twenty eight says you should not gamble. If you read the Rig Veda, book number ten, hymn number thirty four, verse number three to thirteen says you should not gamble. So if you are a good Hindu, you should at least follow what is common. And the basic thing in both these scriptures that there is one God, He has got no image, He has got no idol, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of this Almighty God, the last and final messenger. So I would tell you initially follow both, and after that your scripture says that follow the last and final messenger. That means you follow the hadith of the messenger Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the last and final revelation which was given to him. So brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, sir. Do you 100%. believe? Hundred percent. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sure. Hundred percent. Hundred and one percent. Mashallah. So these two things, <laughs> these two things, brother, are sufficient for you to enter the fold of Islam. To enter the fold of Islam. And after that, you have to read the message and the guidance of this messenger and what was revealed to this messenger. That is the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Sir, I have another one small doubt. Can yes. you uh, may I question? Brother, but do you believe there is one God? Do you believe Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is messenger of God? Yes, sir. These two are sufficient for you to enter the school of Islam. Sure. Doubts will then. always be there. Okay then. Thank you. No, but I'm asking the question. Do you believe in these two things? Yes. Do you have some doubt that before that you want to 
Yes, okay, I, do, brother. I do want to ask one more question. Okay, ask one more question, brother. Yeah. In Islam, it is stated that uh, there is no idol worship, okay? That is number one. Whereas, in India, I see people who are uh, doing on this, uh, what you call, uh, dargas, performing all types of pujas, like Indians, <laughs> Hinduists, okay? What is your answer for this? Brother, you are a Hindu, you told me. Yes. You know that mentioned in your scripture, idol worship is wrong. Yes. Yes. Yet in India, I know millions of Hindus who do idol worship. Yes. That means they are not following the scripture. Similarly, I agree with you, there are many Muslims in India who are not following Quran and Hadith. That, that is... That is my question. That is my that, question. That is my answer. As, as that, a... that is my answer. Like Hindus are not following the scriptures, there are many Muslims who are not following the scripture. Any Muslim who breaks any law of the Quran or any commandment of the Prophet Muhammad he is not a practicing Muslim. So Thank you for your kind answer, sir. But brother, I want to tell you that you want to be a practicing Hindu? No. Yes? No. Practicing means you believe that Almighty God does not have any idols? Yeah, I do accept that there is no idol worship. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. So do you want to enter into the fold of Islam? Yes, please. But there is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nothing, sir. I have come on my own. MashaAllah. So doing out of a free will? 101 percent. MashaAllah. So inshallah I will I will say in Arabic and repeat inshallah. Sure. Go ahead. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad is is the messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. MashaAllah, you're a Muslim and may Allah you. subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you more <laughs> and give you the best in this world and the akhirah. Uh, an interesting um, video. I always say that religions all have something they have in common. If it's a one God, if it's some of the practices, not everything, but just some. And if you really want to learn about something, don't just be comfortable knowing that I believe in this thing and it's the right thing. Yes, it can be the right thing for you, but go out and read about other religions as well. What you're doing in turn is um, you're finding out the similarities, you're finding out the differences, you're associating yourself with... Um, more information out there you're gaining knowledge in the process and gaining knowledge is actually not a bad thing gaining knowledge is actually for your own good it doesn't mean you have to convert after you read that information no it just means you you're able to um communicate and relate or associate with other people from different religions because you're going to have something to talk about you're going to have questions you're going to have answers you're going to be in a position where you can teach someone. You're going to be in a position where you'll be the learner and someone can teach you. And that is something that we should all sincerely look forward to. They say education never ends. But they just don't mean school education, no. Education in different sectors of our lives. And it's really, really up to us to um, watch something like this. Be motivated to actually go out there, read, find out information, talk to someone and what not let me know what you guys think about this video otherwise if there's something that you guys want me to react to drop the name or the link down below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video